Hey, what's up guys? It's Shinan and it's time for me to make another web shooter. So every time I do a new version, I try to improve on the main idea, try to make things a bit more concise and a bit more functional. So for the first version, there used to be two parts that made the whole thing work. For the second one, it became a single piece that goes on your wrist. For the third one, it remained basically the same but smaller in overall volume and a bit more compact. And for the fourth one, I tried to do what was expected and added a few more things that were lacking in the previous iterations. So first of all, this web shooter has a proper casing and every component has its own designated place. It can easily be taken on or off thanks to these neodymium magnets on each side. On the other side of that, the hinge has two bearings on both ends which helps it to open and close smoothly. The coil barrel now has a small magnet inside which likely holds the projectile in place so when you lower your arm it doesn't slide out. The capacitor can now be charged to 200 volts in under a minute which is a significant an upgrade. The two LiPo batteries can be charged individually by a USB-C port. The controller is a lot cleaner now and has a minimal design and instead of having just a single switch as the trigger, you now have to press two of them at the same time to use it, which can be viewed as a safety feature. The lower button is used to charge the capacitor and the upper button is used to retract the projectile, which is the main upgrade of the whip shooter, the retractable mechanism. The entire designing and building process is solely revolved around that and since I want that to be the focus of this version, I started off with some rough ideas to see how can I make that work? So the first idea was to simply attach a pulley to a motor and when the projectile accelerates, it will unwind the thread from the pulley and yeah, there you go. And if you want to retract the projectile, then just do it the other way. For that, I used a cordless motor because just in general, they accelerate a bit faster and by not having an iron core, it doesn't snap in places and retains a smooth motion, which seems ideal for what I want to use it for. So that's what I went with. After setting everything up, things didn't really go as expected. Basically, the thread got torn off every single time. Makes sense because when you pull the thread this quick, you feel a lot of resistance and the projectile shoots out pretty fast and doesn't give the spool enough time to normally unwind. And yeah, it is the case that the thread is really weak and easy to rip apart, but I'll get to that in a minute why I didn't use a stronger cable. While I still had that set up, I thought I can simply solve it if I just turn on the motor and the coil at the same time. But turns out the projectile accelerates way faster than the motor does. I guess I can still try to make it work by giving the motor like a 0.1 second head start, but obviously I can't do it by hand, so I have to use something like an Arduino. But if I use that, I'll probably have to use a motor driver. And all that is likely to make the web shooter way bulkier than it already has to be. So I just completely avoided that and moved on to something else. I had some other ideas involving a few moving parts and this is one of those. Basically a pulley is gonna be there in normal position and when it needs to wind the thread it will somehow move in this arc path and stay there for however long it needs to be and then return in its normal position. All of it makes sense to me but I think it's gonna be a bit hard to move the pulley through a curved path. Nevertheless I went ahead and partially checked if this concept works or not and yeah it does. Also the thread unwinds itself pretty nicely so so for so good. And since I have to miniaturize everything, I bought this cordless motor that has a planetary gearbox. It wasn't ready for what I wanted to use it for because the shaft and the gearbox were way too wobbly to do anything. So I went ahead and made this model, which is designed to keep everything sturdy and extend the length of the shaft, which is connected to the motor by an adapter, which then goes inside this housing and then a bearing is used to keep everything concentric. After printing the models and assembling the parts, it was working completely fine. Then I went further and made this model, which is basically the same but extends out a bit more to hold the coil in place. After that was printed and assembled, I have to test if things work or not, just to be sure. Now, when I was winding the thread, I thought it makes a bit more sense if the pulley moves up and down in an arcing path instead of side to side. So I went ahead and made a model which does exactly that. After putting it all together, I was seeing the concept working. And I chose to keep the arms short at first because I want to keep the whole thing as flat as possible. I was even considering to give it a proper casing, but that didn't happen. Anyway, then I made the arms a bit longer, made some modification to the base, and gave it a proper place to stop. After all that, it was working completely. 
completely fine. In the end, I also added a spring so it can go down on its own. Meanwhile, I thought now it's a good idea to test the different types of threads because the main thing is pretty much finalized at this point. The clear cord, which is about 0.2 millimeters thick, just wants to unwind and get stuck in the shaft. This one, which is really identical to the old one, has basically the same issue. It doesn't unwind the right way. And this one is way too thick and this one is way too thin. So for now, I still have to stick with the old one. Anyway, now all there was to do is to take the updated dimensions and model on a figure that fits my wrist. To be honest, I really don't know where to start when modeling something like that, so I loosely took the dimensions of the base of the first web shooter and made this model. Obviously, it had a lot of things wrong with it and it didn't close the gap. So I made some changes and made sure that it closes on the second print. And with that out of the way, now it was time to think about the components and some other small changes. So the capacitors that I've been using for the past three iterations are now replaced with this one, which actually has 64 hours more than both of them combined and is about 4.7 cubic centimeters less in overall volume. I know this iteration looks way bulkier than the last one, but you know, at least I aimed for it. And for the charging circuit, I used this one, which maxes out to 1700 volts when no loads are applied. And the magnet that holds the projectile in place is actually taken from a cordless motor. I had to cut it short a bit to make things concise. Now that everything is basically finalized, I had to add some details in the model, refine the dimensions a bit, assemble the parts, and do the wiring in real life. This is what the circuit looks like. It's still pretty much the same as the older one, but just a little more details are added to it. So that's basically a brief summary of how I made this version. I know I didn't go over every aspect of designing and building this thing because you know, it's a summary and I gotta keep it short. But still, I just wanna go over just another thing that I want to implement in this version, but just couldn't just for the sake of time and budget. If you look at this old sketch, you would see that I wanted to add a voltmeter because how cool would it be to see the capacitor getting charged? So I directly connected a bunch of random resistors in series to the capacitor, which adds up to about 4.6 kilo ohms. I did some tests off camera and it was working kind of fine before something broke in the voltmeter, but you can still see it working. The point that I'm making here is that because I'm adding another load, the capacitor barely gets to charge over 40 volts. So I bought another one of those kits and assembled it, but this time I used 30 1 mega ohm resistors that are connected in parallel, which is about a bit more than 33 kilo ohms. Now the capacitor charges over 120 volts, but the voltmeter doesn't light up. I tried making a few adjustments, but couldn't get it to work, and that one broke too when I was making those adjustments. If you look up online, you would probably find one of these simple circuits where the resistance increases in a specific sequence. In this case, it increases by 10 kilo ohms by each stage. I thought the gradient would be a lot more apparent, but it's not at all. I mean, if you turn on the lights, you barely would be able to tell which one is fully lit and which one is not. I guess I would have tried using LEDs of a different color and using some xenon diodes along with those resistors, but... The project was getting way overdue even then, so I just had to cut things short a bit and get it done as soon as I can. But anyway, that's been it. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one. Peace.